Hey everybody, welcome to an episode of Wednesday here on Chrono Speak Easy. I'm your host Paul, joined with Rob. Hello. Yeah, so badass. And tonight we're going to review Stitcher's and Marvel's Wolverine, The Long Night. And I, I could not do that anymore. It was my throat was yeah. turning into sandpaper. It was good. It was good. It was it. It brought me back to the openings of all those episodes. Yeah, that's sort of what I was going for. Sort of what I was going for. Um, yeah. So as I mentioned, if you could understand me, and um, you know, I was trying to increase my testosterone. Um, we're gonna do sort of like um, a double feature, if you will. We're gonna review the podcast for Wolverine: The Long Night, and. Yesterday, Marvel released the first issue of the comic adaptation of Wolverine the Long Night. I'm very excited, mainly because I enjoyed both of them. Rob? Yeah, for sure. I remember... When did this first start airing? Like, the beginning it was like, of 2018 it was, or, like, mid-2018? Uh, that's a good question. Let me take a look, because I started listening to it over the summer, but I think it had been... Yeah, maybe you're right. Maybe it was because uh... I remember they were doing a huge push advertising wise on other podcasts. It started um, in March. The original release okay, was that makes March sense. 12th. Yeah, and I yeah, started so I remember, in like July. I think I remember hearing all the ads and stuff for it, and the idea of just kind of like a narrative podcast seemed at the time weird to me. Which, in hindsight, I don't really know why. Because I mean, that was what people did for entertainment for like thirty years. Yeah, in like the 20s to 50s or whatever um but yeah one of my friends eventually was like hey have you listened to that wolverine podcast i know you like podcasts and it's like no i haven't is it good and i started listening and it is really cool it's surprisingly good um it works insanely well it really does um i was just explaining to rob prior to recording that um for me this felt like a perfect combination of the x files meets the x-men Mm-hmm. Um, and I really didn't know what to expect. I mean, so a lot of the, the promo stuff I remember really seeing in the comic books was, you know, you have the Marvel logo and there's Wolverine and it's all kind of gritty and scratched and below it, it's the long night. And you see like this sort of mountain range and this car with headlights and two people walking. And I don't know, I it almost, it, it almost, it kind of is reminiscent of like, even the, the pr- uh, promotional art is very reminiscent of the X-Files. Mm-hmm. And I was trying to figure out what it would be. Like, I was just imagining, like, was this going to be, like, Wolverine walking through the woods for 12 episodes and just his inner monologue? <laughs> I really like how they did it because it's really not a Wolverine story. No. It's very much... Wolverine is definitely involved, but for the first, like, 7 out of 10 episodes, yeah, he is just, he's like a whisper. He's like a myth. I mean, it's like, you don't even... He really it, is, yeah. I, I mean, if you came into this blind, I mean, you wouldn't know, like, okay, this Wolverine is just like, what is it exactly? What are they hunting down? Um, because he's spoken um, of... You know, yeah, he's just spoken of a lot. Like, oh, he, like he was working out on the docks, and and then we were on the boat, mm-hmm. and then the ship capsized, and and then he punched the wave with his claws, and the and the wave split. It was unbelievable. Um, yeah. yeah. So the whole like basic story of it is two agents from the FBI supposedly show up in a small town in Alaska, like a small fishing town, um, because there was murders to be investigated. And it basically, the story primarily follows these two agents as they interview their way through the town and you get introduced to like the sheriff of the town, the little deputy, uh, the big rich family in town that runs everything you got. They really, the town was so well-rounded. I mean, Mm -hmm. they had these characters I thought were fully developed with their own backstory and, uh, I mean... Yeah, I mean, I think the great thing about this was that it this would be a great story without it having to be, like, a Wolverine story. If it was just two agents investigating weird goings-on in Alaska, it would still yeah, be solid. I never, yeah, I never realized I would be so into this type of storytelling, like the... I don't know, the audio, like... the I guess it's, it's like a radio play or whatever they used to call it. It really them. is, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean... 
yeah, it's uh, it's it's it really does engage your uh, imagination uh, because you know, for me, you know, when you're reading a comic book, you're kind of like the um, like this, like the sound producer, like you're figuring yeah. out like how the voices sound and the effects and the wind and the city. And then it's kind of flipped. Now you can't see anything, but you're getting all of the sound. So now you're like trying to be like the cinematographer and figure out how this is all um, mm-hmm. looking. So, but it worked though. I didn't think it would, but it did. Uh, would have loved to have heard this in like the if they were to do this in the twenties, because all it's missing is a <clears throat> you know, oh, there's this crazy cat coming to town, Wolverine. See, yeah, Mutton it was just claws. Like just to talk about the. The presentation of it real quick it is it the sound quality i listen to it basically commuting to work all the time so i was wearing headphones pretty much the entire time i listened to it and just like the the 3d sound like the space the way they represent space and Mm -hmm. even when people are talking in rooms and stuff it really sounds like this was all recorded on location like they did such a good job and I think all the acting was really top notch. Um, this actually has a very good cast. Um, you know, when I was looking up the uh, the cast and the crew, uh, because for whatever reason it's not on IMDb, um, which is weird because these are all like this is like a SAG AFRA production. Um, uh, you have Richard Armitage, who, uh, which I actually think he would be a, a good live action Wolverine. Yeah, after I listened to this, I I really liked how he portrayed Wolverine, like the the gruffness to his voice, but it wasn't like cartoony. Like it was, mine it, was. It, <laughs> yeah, it felt grounded. And it's funny, if you click on, I just clicked on his like Wikipedia page, and from far away, he just kind of looks like, a, I almost said a younger Hugh Jackman, even though he's basically the same age. <laughs> yeah. Um, and for those who don't know, uh, Richard Armitage uh actually was in a marvel studios production uh he was in captain america the first avenger he was the spy who shot dr erkskine where he does not look like a wolverine but a very good actor um and he was also um um oh shit i'm drawing a blank on his name um thorin thorin oak and shield in the hobbit films (laughs) I almost called him Thor. It's like Thor Oakenfold. That's a DJ, I think. No, that's Paul mm-hmm. Oakenfold. Anyway, but yeah, Hobbit, he was also great in. And he does a lot of manly stuff with, you know, big hands and big feet. Because he was a dwarf. But, but um, he's great. Yeah, I was going to say, so is the, the two agents, like Tad and, what is it, Sally? Yeah. yeah or Agent and- Pierce and agent marshall right and such it, good agent names such good agent names <laughs> yeah uh i like these actors too especially uh Otto, um essendo um Asendo. um i remember seeing him he was in the one of the born identity movies i think the most recent one um and he was in garden state he's been a few other things i like him as an actor you know what blew me away was she, uh, sheriff ridge was played by scott adsit um, he was in 30 Rock. Um, oh my, holy shit. I did not right, know that was him. I know. It blew me away. Pete Hornberger. Like, at first, mm-hmm. I love 30 Rock. Uh, and I would never have guessed. Usually, I got a thing for voices. It's a weird fetish, but it is what it is. But uh, yeah, it, this, I totally, um, under the radar, over the radar, probably not in the same office as the radar. He was so good. Never would have recognized him. Well done, Scott. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was great. Also, like, it's funny we can get more into it when we start spoiling the story a bit but one of my like first complaints of it i was like man the like the agents seem kind of stale and i don't know how i feel about all this acting and then towards the end it all makes sense and i was like oh my god this is some next level stuff yeah (laughs) no it was really really well done um and uh you know i like to is bob uh balaban who's like kind of like a character actor um Mm -hmm. he was uh uh, was it uh, Langrock Senior, like one of the yeah, uh, like Joseph the, Langrock, yeah, the patriarch there of the, which is the matriarch. Matriarch's the mother. Yeah, patriarch. patriarch. Okay. Make sure I get my, you know, my <laughs> hierarchy terms. Yeah, correct. right. Exactly. Um, but yeah, no, this was just such a stunningly 
well put uh, or well uh, executed uh, production. And I kind of liked the, um, you know, the episodes are. I feel like they're um, they're only a half hour, so it never kind of feels like a big commitment when you would have to mm-hmm. listen to one. Um, it was perfect for me because I take the train to work every morning, and my train ride is like twenty nine minutes, but. I also walk to work. So like if I started an episode, like when I got to the train station, it would be like finishing by the time I got to work. So I like ripped through this in like two weeks. It was great. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh yeah. Perfect for commuting. Um, yeah. And just so well done. I mean, uh, again, uh, just, I just loved the supporting cast. Um, I thought all of the characters were interesting and you could close your eyes and I feel like, you were there. Um, yeah, it was, it's just, like I said, like you've, it felt like you were on location. Like it was so easy to visualize and it was really cool. I've never listened to books on tape or anything, but I get, that's not really even the same thing. This is really, it's almost like, if you ever like flick through a radio station in your car and you hear like the soap operas playing on the radio mm-hmm. and you're like, who would ever listen to this? And I'm like, not me, but I see why people would, I guess. <laughs> um, yeah, I think it depends. I mean, there are some audiobooks that are really good where um, you have a, like a really talented narrator who can kind of do a full cast. Um, sometimes it uh, doesn't work out that way. Um, but if you ever get the chance, you got to check out this BBC production of The Lord of the Rings. That is a full cast. And, and I, I would say the engineering and sound quality is on par with Wolverine the Long Night. And it was I would imagine. Done in the if 80s. They're... And Ian Holm, who uh, played Bilbo in the movie, he played mm-hmm. Frodo in the show. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so it was done in the 80s. and um, So, yeah, that was pretty pretty neat. And I, don't know if you, I don't know any Love Actually fans out there, but uh, this one actor, uh, Bill Nighy, he was in um who's that <laughs> i'd not not bill nye the science guy no i know here i'm kidding because oh. <laughs> i feel like a lot of people would know who he is i need to talk to more people then because no one knows who i'm talking about he's he, in Shaun, Shaun of, of the, the dead, dead. yep he, yeah he was the stepdad he was in love actually he was the rock star um he was in about time as well which was a delightful film <laughs> <laughs> and uh he was also in uh hot fuzz um, yeah, you know, and, he's if he is like British actor guy. Like he's in so many things. Right, he's great. Pirates of the Caribbean. He was uh, Davy Jones. Um, but anyway, he was Samwise Gamgee in the BBC production. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, and it's like, why does it sound so familiar? But it's so unlike any of the other stuff that you've seen him in, or like any of the titles we just listed. Um, but yeah, it's like thirteen episodes. It's the entire trilogy. So well done. Um, in case you love Lord of the Rings, but you're tired of looking at Elijah Wood. <laughs> Great alternative. But uh, but yeah, no, this was um, so well done. Um, and I think it, what I liked was that, um, that, you know, for a show called Wolverine, there was an absence felt by Wolverine, but it, I didn't, I didn't think it was um, like, like you, you were never wondering where's Wolverine. Where, when is he going to come into the picture? Mm-hmm. I think the way they used him was really well done, and it was like you said, it was kind of like listening to like a sci-fi-ish like procedural drama. But as like a huge comic nerd, there's like all these little hints and stuff, and you're just like, oh, three claws. I know who has three claws. Yeah. <laughs> And I liked how for the how for the most part it was pretty self contained. Oh yeah, for sure. Like you know there there wasn't like a, I don't know like like it didn't it I don't correct me if I'm wrong I don't recall there being a, like any world building it wasn't like and there's someone named Logan here there's a Charles Xavier on the phone <laughs> or, yeah no know, not at all you know even like a Tony Stark news flash in the background in other news Avengers there's stopped. like. There's like whispers of early episodes, and there's like you don't think this could be done by, uh, and then they get interrupted like, oh, don't even say it, yeah. and then like towards the end you hear the term mutant I think used once, maybe, maybe mm-hmm. twice in the entire series. It is really self-contained, and not even till the very last episode does it even like really tie in 
to the greater like X-Men verse. Yeah. Like this is something realistically you could give to anyone that's into this type of story and be like, check this out. It's really good. Yeah. No, it's like, yeah. And I feel like even if you weren't into like, like even if you weren't into like science fiction, I feel like it's, it's like grounded enough where it's just like a murder mystery. Yeah, it's like there's some heightened stuff, especially towards the end. Mm. But by that point, I mean, if you're not already in it to win it, you're not going to enjoy it anyway. Right. But. Yeah. I feel like at that point, they've, they've definitely have earned. If you stuck with that long, then I think they've earned your kind of disbelief if you're not into like the science fiction y mm-hmm. side of things. Um, yeah. And also, it's definitely like rated R. Like, I would not give this to your little kid who likes Wolverine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no. Well, one, the nudity. Whew. Um, but also... I know. Uh, those those boobs sounded like yeah. they were there. <laughs> yeah, just, like, rubbing up against the microphone. Also, um, the advertisements for Rocket Mortgage. Your kid's not going to want to buy a house at this age. <laughs> Don't plant those seeds in their head now. <laughs> just have them build Lego um, houses. But, yeah, if you haven't listened to it yet, you should pause our review of it and go listen to it, then come back because I want to talk about some stuff. Yeah. All right, I assume they left. <laughs> <laughs> you know, one thing I liked about this, I found this to be genuinely like, whew, like unsettling at certain points, you know? It was, yeah. It was like my mind was totally buying into everything, just sort of like kind of like feeling the fog coming off of the ocean you know just like just sort of the gray mm-hmm. skies like the kind of like the smell of the ocean um and yeah it built it built an atmosphere more than like some movies even and like there was times where i was listening to it like at nighttime and stuff and it's like it's kind of creepy at times and yeah it's and in that cult what was it the, uh, mm-hmm. the aurora cult the aurora Oh man, that shit was creepy. Like, or what was that one bit where he, the guy calls in and he's like, "Oh, I was, uh, I was, you know, uh, someone broke into my house. All right, well, send a squad car. No, 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 they just took all my light bulbs." <laughs> I know it's like, all right, Alaska guy. Yeah, it's like weird, but it's like, oh god, that would creep me out if I came home. All my stuff is here, but all of my light bulbs are gone. Or like those advertising. The- that you would hear at like the radio announcement. Yeah, the Those first episode ends with it, doesn't it? Something. Yeah, I think so. And I just I love how it starts. You like you hear the radio, like it sounds like it's coming from the radio, but they produce it in a way so like it slowly goes from like the radio quality and then it blends into just the guy's voice. Right. And how they always ended. And just like the one episode that it ends and you're just like good night, nobody. And oh it yeah. Like ends, it's like. It's so good. I loved the whole inclusion of the Aurora because they were like a constant presence and like the townspeople always talked about them and the radio things kept happening, but they weren't even that huge of like an impact on the story. Like there's a little bit of um, commotion that happens in the very like last episode or the second to last episode. But other than that, they're kind of just like there, like they're just this weird unsettling group that is like somewhat involved in the goings on in the town but everybody else just weirded out by him mm-hmm. yeah no it was uh just creepy and again it kind of just kind of added to that like x files type mm-hmm. feeling where you know even if like even even nothing supernatural is going on like something's going on like there is a bunch of like weird wacky shit happening But um, I'm trying to think. Yeah, like just so the town it takes place in, what's it called? Uh, Langrock. <laughs> or no, what was it? No, Langrock. No, Langrock is the. Uh, or is it Langrock Lumber? Yeah, they're the they're Langrock. They own the lumber company, the fishing company, the canning company. They basically they have like the monopoly on all the businesses in the town and the drug monopoly. <laughs> mm. Um, oh, why can't I remember it? Well, never mind. <laughs> but <laughs> but, it, but it, it takes place, yeah, in that small, like, Alaskan town. And I don't know. They just they build it up so well. That even, like, you learn the corner. You meet, like, everybody who works at the lumber yard. Um, 
the sheriff and the deputy Billy mm-hmm. who are like the only there's like a handful of cops in the whole town and I feel like you learn like they do such a good job of introducing like it seems like you know the whole, the whole town you feel like you understand like the geography of it there's like the bar that Logan goes to occasionally and kind of like befriends one of the bartenders and gets into fights and stuff mm-hmm. yeah it did like you said we didn't it doesn't do a lot of world building on like a universal scale but it does such a good job of building up this town yeah which i need to figure out the name of it because it's gonna drive me insane <laughs> the, wait what's gonna drive me insane if i can't remember the name of the town i'm drawing a blank as well yeah i'll find it out but um what did you think of the two officers like pierce and as Uh, like kind of because they're basically the main characters of this i thought it was great and like i said i you know at first i was like i don't know and like you're gonna try to get me to care about two people who aren't named wolverine Mm -hmm. but uh i liked their dynamic um you know um like I like how Sally is kind of like a like a no nonsense, and I like the actress who performed it because she just sounded like a hard ass. Like she's just like not fucking around here on mm-hmm. business. Like, um, I mean, it, in a lot of ways, bef- you know, especially before the reveal, I thought that she was sort of they uh, they complemented e- each other well and how different they are. Like she was very kind of by the book, almost like robotic in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, and then whereas, you know, Pierce, he, he just, uh, or Marshall, or was, was it Marshall? Yeah, um, no, Sally sorry. Pierce. Got it. Um, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Uh, no, I just liked them a lot and just, and, and I did kind of feel like that I would, that I would care for them whenever I felt that they, that there was any kind of real danger for mm-hmm. them. Yeah. They do a really good job of making it believable eventually like that they're the good guys Mm -hmm. and because there's this whole time as like a comic nerd and stuff like that i'm like all right wolverine's not the main character and like the small town people i'm like i don't trust these agents (laughs) right and i was like hmm and then there's also the clues wolverine leaves behind and like the letters to his girlfriend that's basically just like these weapon x guys are out to get me and they're close behind and i'm just like are the agents the weapon x people and but then like again they do such a good job of making you like kind of feel for them especially marshall because he is the more empathetic one right the more playful of the two yeah like he he has the fidget spinner that you always hear spinning in the background yeah which i thought was kind of a cool way to like using sound just like show like have have, like a nervous tick be present right i also really like their dynamic with um what was it bobby not billy um kind of the like young (laughs) yeah we can do sound effects too because um bobby at first kind of came across as like annoying yeah but I think that was kind of by design because then as the story goes through and they kind of flesh out his character, kind of how he's like a recovering addict or of sorts. And the sheriff kind of knew that instead of like putting him in jail, it's like, all right, I'm going to use you because you're, you seem young and impressionable. <laughs> right. Um, are you going to just dive into, um, into the, the reveal of the agents or did, or did we miss it? And I wasn't paying attention. Uh, we didn't fully reveal it, but let's just, yeah, let's just get into that. Because at this point, if you're listening, you've, you've listened to it as well, so. Right. They're brother and sister. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're like, I, I, I guess they're like highly advanced, like, sentinels. Yeah, Wolverine refers, or Logan refers to them as a sentinel. Um, so I guess, yeah, they're kind of like a life model decoy sentinel or something. Hybrid. When the, when episode 10 the very last one starts and you basically hear pierce interrogating marshall and she's like you broke weapon x protocol i was like i knew it (laughs) (laughs) it's like code of that like weapon x code of ethics Uh something like that um i did um 
find an interesting quote from um, the writer uh, Ben Percy, um, who said that many of the flashbacks we heard throughout the series, it was actually Agents Pierce and Marshall replaying their own surveillance audio back to one one another. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so I kind of just get the feeling like they're just like kind of like um, like walking, talking, um, like tape recorders. Like, <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that they're. Um, and it's interesting because, you know, we're kind of like, I don't want to say they're narrating, but we're following them. And I think, you know, even in sometimes, um, you know, that even, you know, sometimes I guess the way it was written, you kind of got the feeling like, well, how reliable are these surveillance tapes that they have? Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. But I guess if you think back on it, they pretty much either are present in almost mm -hmm. all the scenes. They have like the police station bugged, so any conversations going on in there, they had access to. A lot of the early Logan stuff is just them reading letters of his or like diary entries. Right. And like I said, they do the weird thing where they'll, or not weird, it's cool how you'll hear like the radio audio and then it blends into just hearing the person's voice. But that's just kind of a cool effect for the listeners. But I never really thought about that, that they could literally have just been like your narrator. Like you're just listening to their brains. <laughs> right. Yeah. It like, yeah, it was really well done. It was, it was, it was clever. Um, and it was something that I did not see coming at all. By the, by the end, like when Wolverine seems like he almost trusts them a little bit like in the very last episode mm -hmm. i was like oh all right so maybe they are the good guys but then as soon as that first episode started I was like ah it was good they got me <laughs> <laughs> they they just got me to believe right now have they greenlit a, a second season for this um, I don't know if they've greenlit a second season of this per se, but I do know that they are going to work on more stuff like this. Oh, wait, what's this? Read the season two announcement. <laughs> hot, Breaking hot, this, hot the presses. This just in. Hot off the presses from November 5th. <laughs> uh, let's see. So they announced Wolverine The Lost Trail, which is the second season of this. And it'll be starting in the winter of 2019. I don't know if that's the winter that we are currently in or next year or like the end of this year. Um, Got it. I'm this gonna... one takes place in Louisiana. Oh. Richard Armitage returns as Wolverine, which is sweet. Nice. Yes. Um, yeah. That's I'm pretty down. cool. I'm super down. I would love to see like what else they could tackle. Um, you know, like I would love to to see. Um, I bet they could easily do a Spider Man. Yeah, I think you a Spider Man one would be fun. You get plenty of supporting characters. You know, Aunt May and uh, Mary Jane and Harry Osborne, and just you know, just all like the city sounds and him swinging through the city. I think you could mm -hmm. actually. Yeah, because Spider Man talks to himself all the fucking time. Right. Um. And it's funny. It'd be totally very different. So I'd like to see how they can pull that off too. Well, I wouldn't want Spider Man the Long Night. Like, so yeah, I would exactly. need, you know, I need Spider Man Sunny Afternoon. You know, like, I, just give give me enough like danger and suspense, but let me have a good time. Or what about like a, I'm trying to think what else they could do? Maybe like a Fantastic Four. Yeah, I mean, I'd be there's... I'd be interested to see how they pull off a team. There was a lot of characters in this one, but they've really only followed a couple, like two. Mm-hmm. Um, because I think that's one thing the show did really strong is every time you heard somebody talk, you instantly like knew who they were, right? Which when you're only listening, it's like if you first listen to a podcast for the first time and there's like six people on it, and for the first like month of listening to it, you're like, who are these people? What's wait? Is this this what? I mean, me and Paul sound exactly the same, obviously. So to our new listeners, you'd probably be like, who's who? What? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> There's actually one thing I do like about our show is that, is that everyone sounds distinct enough yeah, from Jay all, and Chandler. Don't all and, blend in. <laughs> although what's funny, you know, speaking of sounding alike, I did get a message today from Sam Cusick, who um, um, he was on our Cyclops episode. He also did the Senpai 
board game episode. Um, he sent me a message that he was at the Beehive, and I guess somebody there sounds exactly like me. So I have an audio doppelganger out there. So I believe it. I know. There's every, everybody has one. It's yeah. <laughs> It'd just be weird, like if I ever like spoke to this person. I'm like, wait, am I getting like a weird feedback? <laughs> but it's responding to what I'm saying. This is strange. Uh, but yeah, but no, the the casting for this is so well done because everyone is distinct and unique, and, and yeah, you're not like, wait, who, what? What did you think about the? Uh, I forget which Langrock it is. It's like the feeble son who turns into. In my head, I pictured him kind of turning into like Wendigo, basically. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I thought, I thought that was pretty cool because you get introduced to that character kind of early on, and his dad like yells at him, but he's like loves the dogs. And you're like, oh man, that son's getting shit on. Yeah, and he's like the cool, strong older brother, and that was always that family dynamic, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it's it, it, with this show, you know, it, was, it sort of kind of felt like Chekhov's gun, where you know, if it's introduced at some point, you know, it's gonna, you know, it's gonna circle back later. Um, yeah, I thought they did a good job of that because they do plant the seeds that you kind of start suspecting something like that's going on, mm-hmm. and you're not sure which of the Lang rocks it is per se, but. I think it was, I think I had a gut feeling more so when the reveal came out that he was the monster than like the Weapon X thing. Like the Weapon X thing, I had like a hunch. Right. You know what? But I thought when the monster reveal came in, it wasn't like disappointing. I was just like, all right, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, Good storytelling. (laughs) I I actually kept waiting for the agents to be agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. That's what I sort of kept thinking was going to be like, like, are are these guys like S.H.I.E.L.D.? Because they seem to know. A little bit more than your average investigative mm-hmm. protagonist. Like, you know, they didn't, I was yeah. going to say, and they also, like, uh, Bobby always comments on, like, their crazy high-tech stuff they're using. Right. So I just thought, oh, it's going to be shield gear. Mm-hmm. I kept waiting for Nick Fury to, you know, to be like, like, what's the status? Or, what's the status, motherfucker? Depending <laughs> on who they cast, you know. Um, but, yeah, no, um... Yeah, it was really good. This is actually, I, I, you know, I, I think I actually may re-listen to this because I would love to listen to this now, knowing about the agents, uh huh, and kind of see how those like seeds are planted early on. I think that'd be cool. Yeah, I do yeah. think. Speaking of like the kind of monster bad guy in this, I think the scene where you hear him talking to his father and you hear him going from like the human into the monster is really really well done and really cool it's like the audio version of like an american werewolf in london (laughs) yeah that's i think that's a good way to describe it yeah no the engineering and mastering for this was just superb um i mean not that i not i'm surprised like i wasn't expecting you know bad quality but you know it's it was just yeah it was just really well done um i mean stitcher has certainly um, I don't know. They get my seal of approval. Yeah, I'm I'm down that these companies are kind of producing stuff like this. Because like I've been listening to podcasts for like a decade now, and they've slowly become more popular, more popular, more popular. But again, it's like ninety percent of what I listen to is like video game shows and movie shows and nerd stuff. Right. But like this whole narrative, high production thing, it's really cool, and I hope. Not just Marvel. Yeah. I hope there's more stuff done like this that's really good. I'm sure there yeah. is, and I'm just ignorant of it. Yeah. But. Well, dude, have you listened to Lore? I have listened to some episodes of Lore, and it just, it's never caught me. Ugh, man, that's too bad. Well, see, I, I, I got this gig over the summer where I was doing a lot, a lot of data entry, and so I needed things to listen to, and it was like The Long Night and Lore. Mm-hmm. And, uh. But yeah, I, lore is not like a long night because it's just, just it's it's one um, you know person narrating. But it's uh, I don't know. I mean, it's it, I I think it kind of put me into like an early Halloween feel between this and lore. Like I was just like I was ready for like creepy mysteries and stuff and such. Yeah, um, I liked I liked that I listened to this in the fall going into winter. Yeah, because 
like I'd get off the train and I'd be a little cold and it'd be like it was fitting. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I listened to it like in July. So not like too fitting, but I mean, like I was saying earlier, it caught my it caught my imagination where I could just sort of close my eyes and like be there and feel it. Um mm-hmm. Yeah, it was just so well done. Um and now I love that I didn't even know they were doing this, but I love that um they're adapting the podcast for a, a comic book. Um and it's one of those things where when I heard about it I was like, okay, but not a lot of Wolverine, but I think it still it still works. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean the story's great. I don't know like if if I hadn't listened to the podcast, I don't know if I would love this comic as much. Mm-hmm. But I think as like two pieces of a whole, I think it's really cool because I loved kind of listening to it and visualizing it all myself and kind of building the world out of my imagination. But now going back and kind of reading through it. And like you said, it's like a storyboard essentially for the podcast. And it's just really cool seeing how they drew the world and how similar a bunch of it is to how I pictured it. Mm -hmm. Just like the atmosphere. I think the way they drew the agents is very similar to how I was picturing it. Oh yeah, just like the mountains in the background with all the pine trees, and mm-hmm. it's it's a really cool piece to go along with it. And I want to keep reading because I want to see how they show like the monster. I want to see how they show like the strawberry kids, those oh, little, like, yeah. feral kids that like <laughs> the eco terrorists, <laughs> right? Yeah, I yeah, I, I mean, I'm just kind of just just gazing at the art again now. Um, I like that it doesn't feel like a Marvel comic book. Like it almost kind of feels like this could be um, ID, like IDW or Image or you know like just some just sort of like a like if someone said like oh check out this comic it's called The Long Night I'd be like oh, okay this is cool it's Marcio Takara whose work I recognized like instantly but I couldn't put a finger on like what I recognized him for mm-hmm. so if you search his name there's pictures he drew of like Superman and Supergirl and I guess he worked on Jessica Jones and Daredevil. Um, but it's a very cool, I don't even know how to describe it. Cause it's, it's not like anime inspired, but it's very like almost cartoony in a way, but, but yeah, I, I definitely get like the IDW or like the, it's definitely got some grit to it too. Mm-hmm. I think, um, like like I'm this makes you think like I'm reading like this on the art for some reason it's making me think of um I can't believe I'm blanking on the writer's name like he did Sweet Tooth um oh um (laughs) do you know who I'm talking about right yeah yeah I'm blanking on his name I'm so my brain like turns off all the time and it's uh Holy and, shit, Jeff Lemire. He, Why can't I think of Jeff Lemire? <laughs> Jeff Lemire? Thank you. Yeah, and he actually did some X-Men comics too for Marvel. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was the uh, main X-Men guy for a while. Yeah. Um, so yeah, this looks like, I don't know, for some reason this art reminds me of like his writing. Like I feel like the kind of the kind of go the, together well. The but, playful uh, but, yeah. but dark. <laughs> yeah, dark. But I like it though. I do like the art. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's... It's fitting. I think this also could have been cool. Like one of the few Marvel comics that work in like black and white, I think it would be a very Ooh, black cool, and white would like, have been cool. I do like the color palette for this though. Cause it does yeah, kind of catch They do that. nail exactly how I pictured in my head. Yeah. Like, yeah. No, it's, it's good. That's real good actually. Um, yeah. Like now, like, you know, I'm wondering too, yeah, since they're going to be going on to a second season, if they're going to like, are they going to try to just kind of continue the same formula, or are we going to actually hear him do more than whisper talk and grunt and you know what I mean? Like, I wonder. I, I mean, because you know, because the, the best sequels for me always feel like when they try not to be like its predecessor. Yeah, I think if they do the whole 
kind of like Logan's basically the shark in Jaws, <laughs> right? Where you That's see him or you hear him in like shadow and stuff and in whispers, but it, it's not till the very end where you actually get he comes out of the dark and it's kind of like yeah the Jaws alien that whole thing where the thing you came to see doesn't really show itself till the end and i think if they did that again it would be i think it'd be disappointing just because richard armitage does do such a good job at being logan right and that's why i would like to see what he brings to the character more than just like being like oh we found this letter from logan again it also says it takes place in louisiana in isn't that (gasps) where in the comic or in the audio book they said that's where he came from, so this could be a prequel, maybe. Oh, maybe because maybe his. Had, I was gonna go say back. unfinished business. Yeah, he's got to meet up with Gambit. You know, what I'm saying. I was about to say, dude, if they, could, <laughs> if they could get Gambit in there, that would be, uh, dude, oh my god, dude, a if Gambit in episode in ten. A, you just hear somebody say Mona me, and you're just like, what? oh my god, no. If we could get, I want like a. Planes, trains, automobiles with <laughs> Logan and Gambit. That would be hilarious. You know, like Gan- Gambit can be like the John Candy character and Logan's the Steve Martin. You know, like, like oh, I got a sure room. Hey, relax, one of me. We'll make it work. You know, like, just like, I just, I don't know. I would just, I think, I would just be fucking delighted with that. I, I feel like if they do it, if they do this, they bring Wolverine to louisiana and they don't have gambit in there at all they're just leaving something on the table there that's it it would be irresponsible of them if like i feel like if 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 there wasn't something there for logan because i think um i'm sorry i think um i think gambit would also work in a podcast setting you could totally do a gambit like a gambit uh, podcast there's definitely enough for the character to do, plenty of people for him to talk to, and there's plenty of women for him to flirt with. You know, there's mm-hmm. <laughs> possibilities are endless for, you know, for our favorite Cajun. Yeah, people always say that Gambit's kind of just like a less good Wolverine. Or I've heard people say that because he's kind of like that loner, rogue type. But uh, I never yeah. saw it, and I always liked their interactions together. Yeah, I kind of sometimes think Gambit is... Um, I might catch some flack for this. Sometimes I think he's a bit more interesting. I I think just because I've been exposed to Logan being the cool loner for so long that I like that Gambit doesn't really take himself all that seriously. Like he's got mm-hmm. his own baggage, but he's like, eh, you know. Yeah, my I'll favorite. Make do. My favorite Wolverine is kind of the like curmudgeon-y dad Wolverine. Yeah. Or when he's not like full on bloodlust, he's not. I don't know. Right, like he needs a, he needs like a Kitty Pride or a Jubilee. Yeah, around I, I, him. I love him when he's got his little sidekicks, little, his little teenage girls he's got to look after. Yeah, and I think it's just so nice that he has these like, like that he can have these like platonic female relationships where he's just like, yeah, he kind of rolls in as like the father figure type. There's never anything other than with Jean Grey. There's never anything like. Or Storm, he's got he's had his hookups with Storm. Yeah, but that's fine. Let's be real. They're oh no, I'm just saying Storm's a yeah, free woman. Right, <laughs> she's, a, she's a goddess. Um, but but yeah, like I with the teenage girls, I mean, like it's very much just yeah, it's it's more like a guidance and like caretaker role almost. And and I always kind of like that he doesn't want to do it. He's like, oh god, all right, mm-hmm. here we go. yeah, he, he just falls into it every time. Yeah, it's like, I have no one to pick me up from the mall. And there are sentinels here. Oh, god damn it, all right. I'll be right there. Um, well, you know I was thinking, too? If you ever had Gambit and Wolverine in a podcast, just think of, like, like the one-liners that they could recycle from the X-Men cartoon. I mean, out of the way, Gumbo. <laughs> one of my favorite lines, because his name is Gambit, Gambit, Gumbo, K- it's fucking great. That joke has never been lost on me. Like, I would love just to, like, see that again or hear it in this sense. Yeah, if, se- way, Gumbo. if season two doesn't have that somewhere, even if it's just, like, super in passing, like, he's just walking through a crowd and you hear that and then somebody 
and like Gambit's voice said something, I'd be delighted. You know, I was thinking too, it would also be kind of great for a podcast if they ever wanted to do God Loves, Man Kills. That would be cool. That could definitely, like if they wanted to like kind of, um, you know, kind of beef it up so that it's like a, you know, like a, like a 10 episode thing, you know, like each episode's a half hour, they could totally do a God Loves, Man Kills. There's enough supporting characters, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, I think it could, yeah, possibilities are endless and uh i think i'm so happy that i that i wasn't right about the long night yeah i think this is a perfect proof of concept that this type of format works and works very well Mm -hmm. so if this was like three times a year or something i get these sweet marvel stories released like this i'd be delighted oh totally yeah you don't be kind of fun maybe we'll try this like l- listening to the podcast while reading the comic you'd be like do you ever get those like tapes when you were a kid i'm much older than you so maybe you don't know what i'm talking about but i remember like getting these like picture books i know what you're talking about i had a transformers you, you, you one. would like you like read along with the tape and just, just like because you kind of just understood like the enunciating and the words and oh yeah like ph makes a f- sound and like you could do it like that teach yourself to read again with Wolverine and the Long Night. I'd be down. I mean, I ripped through this issue earlier just because as I was reading it, I could like hear the podcast in my head and it was just so cool to visualize all the words and stuff, but... Yeah. No, it was good. Uh, yeah, and I can't stress enough. I definitely want more for... Burns. You know. That's the town. <laughs> <laughs> Burns, Alaska. <laughs> Oh, man. There you go. The mystery has been solved. Except the one mystery of this podcast. The deep, deep deep-rooted podcast mystery of how What's-Her-Name got to the moon. Do we never get that sorted out? Somebody, I don't know. Whatever the explanation was, it clearly wasn't good because we didn't remember it. Yeah. But... You know that's actually I now that the, now that that run is done, um, I should I should read it. Yeah, I wish if they released a leather bound like triple absolute version of the Jason Aaron Thor run, I think that would be one of the best like shelf pieces of comic books in the last oh, ten yeah. years because it is so long, it is so epic. He only worked with like the best artists the whole time yeah i mean i read i i read um i want to say like 85 percent of his run i just um i think i think with the move to colorado and everything i I fell off but i mean the god killer that needs to be a movie if they Mm -hmm. ever wanted to do a thor four, that would be an excellent um you know concept or just like plot I mean, especially, I don't know what world we're going to live in after Endgame, but I mean, that's a story where you really don't need Asgard or, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, you, you mean you could explore the other religions, uh, but whatever. Uh, yeah, no, I think that'd be great. Um, yeah, so I should definitely get, get back on to reading that. I am still reading Spider-Man after the Spider-Verse because like, oh, I'm just going to keep going. Mm-hmm. Um, where Peter Parker is rich with Parker Industries and... Um, I know you said you kind of fell off it because it wasn't your Peter Parker. I would say stick with it. If you're hurting for material, it's – it's Dan, Dan Slaw does a good job with Peter Parker because I feel like he, he's still the same person despite mm-hmm. – because even though, even though he's will, got his own I was going to say company, after Spider-Verse, I do think Dan Slott really does have Peter Parker down. Like oh, my yeah. Peter Parker was present in that story for sure. Oh, yeah. And the great thing about the Peter Parker is that even though he's rich and successful, there is still the Parker luck hard at work. Like, there are still plans mm-hmm. blowing up in his face. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's good. Um, I still don't understand. Because um, I know there was. So then there was Secret Wars. Remember how. And then all the comics. Ca- th- that all of the comics that came out after that were like six months later. Yes. So I don't know how, like, 
does like I don't know. I just don't know how it works. Like, because because Miles is in the Spider Man run, and it's great because I love Miles. But I'm like, well, do they remember what happened in Secret Wars, or like, is there a new origin for how they met? You know what I mean? Like, I, I that hasn't been explained, or I missed it, and I'm a big old dummy. There's like a. I'm still kind of confused. I fell off of Marvel for a, a little bit, so I don't know how much of like the whole Secret Wars thing kind of plays into it but i do remember in that first issue fantastic four we talked about when they were talking about why like re and sue were gone yeah i feel like they there's like a slight mention to it but i think they also kind of acted as if they were a little hazy on remembering why it all happened right because i remember they were on that ship that's how they survived the destruction of their earth Mm -hmm. and then like yeah, I don't know when they were when Reed was rewriting reality again. If like he just like, like I would just like to know like how their versions met. Like, did Miles like, ha- like yeah? How how do they know e- each other? How did he get bit by a spider? You know, because obviously it's rewritten be- because Prowler is in Spider Man, but it's not mentioned if he's related or anything like that. Right. So. Uh, if you know, tell me. Let you know, let me know. And if you want to drop us a line, yeah. There's some there's some deep Marvel research I need to do because I've been seeing like news about the whole like the X Men event that's going on and Scott like old Cyclops is Scott back. Old is Cyclops. Back. And I'm like, all right. Well, if Cyclops is back, I mean, obviously, I got to find out Just what the hell's going on. Do it right this time. Do it right this time. Let's not have. I don't want. Although I bad I did, like, Cyclops anymore. I yeah. want. I want Boy Scouts Cyclops. <laughs> right. Um, I although I you know I didn't mind teenage Cyclops, but don't there's there's Boy Scout Sorry. Boy Boys, Scout. <laughs> oh Jesus. Boy Scout <laughs> Cyclops. And then there's douche Scott Summers. Let's just stick with the Boy Scout. Why can't I fucking talk? Boy Scout. Stick with that. hmm Yeah, and I mean we've discussed how Right, the many just... the many faces of Scott Summers, but yeah, I don't know. Well, Rob, what have you been reading recently? Um, or listening to, watching, reading? I haven't been reading too many comic books lately. I've been kind of adulting. Yeah, getting ready to be a dad and <laughs> wow. doing housework and stuff like that. Do you have like a crib ready? Uh, we have a does, bassinet built, which does the baby, does the baby which have is a what, what the the baby would be in. Not yet. He well, the baby will be sleeping in our room next to us in his little bassinet for a while. I think that's how well, it works. Yeah, that sounds about right. And I wouldn't want to we'll, leave it by, by itself. By the time the baby has his own room, hopefully we'll have moved. Um, that's the plan. So I've been doing a lot of, yeah, adulting stuff. <laughs> oh man, Rob, that is bananas. And I mean it in the best way possible. Like it. It it's like I feel like I'm not like I don't know what I'm doing with myself. Like I there are a shit ton of toys at my work desk <laughs> in my quote unquote office. And it's like man, Rom's having a kid and I will say once I move and I have some more space, I'm gonna carve out a little section of my nerddom, get all my old boxes of comic books for my parents, put them somewhere where I can occasionally go and look at them and right it'll be nice yeah no i think well you gotta have that that's the important thing i mean you know what at some point i'm gonna do a shout out we need to bring my friend Juan on the show he's my obi-wan he's the one who introduced me to comicopia taught me the ways of comic books uh rumor has it he's moving to colorado so at some point we'll have to have him on the show and then we can do a dad and comic book episode Mm mm-hmm just how to keep the nerd life going. I will say I, one of our baby shower gifts we got, which is awesome, is a bunch of Marvel kids books. Nice. And do you remember those like their Disney books back in the day, like the golden books? They had the little gold. Yeah. So they make yeah. Marvel versions of those now. I saw there's Disney a Captain America everything. one. I have one of those. There's also I like a got it. <laughs> there's like a kids infinity gauntlet type thing like there's a thanos Shut story up. and i'm like oh that my is... god this is ridiculous i can't Did wait to read, read all these oh i have i god. flicked through it but i'm like i'll save it to read these with with my kid <laughs> i want to know how they explain that in a kid-friendly way 
Mm-hmm. I'm very Thanos interested. Thanos was mad that he didn't have his lunch. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, in the coming years, I'll have a lot more reviews on children's books, uh, all ages comics. Find out which one of those are good. You know, I think there's an untapped market out there. Well, like uh, speaking of Comicopia, you'd always walk into Comicopia, and right when you walk in, there's like the all ages shelf, and then there's yeah. every other comic. <laughs> but right. clearly, there's a market for that, and. I hear there's some really good like Superman and DC stuff and I always see like the Marvel Spider-Man ones and there's definitely stuff there. I'm, I'm interested. <laughs> yeah, no, totally. No, I mean, the great thing about comic books is that it's such a great gateway into reading, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, like, cause I was a kid, like I had the cartoons and everything, but you know, when I saw the comics, I would be like, this looks way more intense than whatever I'm watching. Mm hmm. I need to know what's going on. Yeah, and if people say it doesn't count as a reading, like, when you're done reading The Watchmen, it feels like you just read the goddamn Scarlet Letter. Like, that's some uh, dance y- shit. <laughs> yeah, uh, Watchmen, Mouse, Persepolis. Mm-hmm. You know, those are some intense comic books. But, uh, but no, but I, it's still reading. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I mean, even if you're just starting out, I mean, you still have to sound out words. Yeah, it is the art. It's the act of reading. Like, you can't read a comic book properly if you can't read. <laughs> right, exactly. I I mean... Yeah, I mean, I mean we're obviously gonna... we're going to be huge proponents of comic books, and I think anybody listening to as well, but I think right. they're a great tool for learning, and... Totally. Just every... I don't know. I love comic books. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, if you haven't gotten that by now, listening to us, but, um... Yeah, we love comic books, and we love you for listening, and... If you have any parental tips about um, raising kids and maintaining comic <laughs> collections, I know with Juan, he's he has like the Marvel Legends figures that I have, but he also has like there's like Daddy's toys, and then there's like there's like mm-hmm. Drake's toys, and and uh, it was funny because they came to, to our apartment one day, and um, you know they obviously wanted to see my collection, and I remember um, Diana, uh, the, you know the. Uh, their mom was saying now listen like paul's toys are like daddy's toys you can look <laughs> at them and i was like oh my god i and, and it just dawned on me it's like man when angela have and i have kids like yeah we're gonna have to like have a talk i know i have to like hide my magic cards somewhere where he can't grab them and wreck them i'm like no that box is worth far too much money <laughs> oh my god well you know what angela and i are gonna have a good time shopping for your kid just any little baby books <laughs> yeah just yeah it's gonna be it's gonna be a good time team good times welcome to life and planet earth mm-hmm. i get to see it see it now now it's a boy right it is a boy this has been, have you confirmed uh what the name's gonna be yet is that still up in the year it's confirmed it is max <gasps> awesome <laughs> great well i love it and uh, so i'm just thinking of, of a little maximilian in his what did you call it? His day bed? What was it? His bidet? His bassinet. Yeah, his bidet. <laughs> it's like, yeah, we don't want to change diapers, so we're going to introduce him to the bidet very early. <laughs> and his bassinet falling asleep listening to this <laughs> podcast. It's going to be great. Well, Maximilian, we can't wait to see you. Um, but yeah, um, as always, you all know the drill. Wednesday comic podcast at gmail.com. Uh, give us some feedback. Definitely parental tips. Um, and iTunes, um, and uh, we're on Stitcher too, right? Yeah, we're pretty I much everywhere. Blanked. There's yeah, probably some at- weird podcast place where, where I don't think we're on SoundCloud. I don't think we might be, but yeah, we're everywhere else. <laughs> we're not hard to find, so definitely give us some reviews. And as always, enjoy your issues. <laughs>